right now we cannot stop progression. Nothing we have done has stopped progression. Um, slowing progression, well, there are some approaches that can slow disability. Now whether that's slowing the disease itself is not clear. It's hard to measure disease progression versus clinical worsening. Uh, so some people use the term disease modification, meaning slowing the disease, whereas a clinical slowing is a different element. Now, if you slow the disease, you're also slowing the symptoms. But if you just slow the symptoms, how do you know that it's really the disease slowing down or it's something to do with the medicine you're taking? Slowing the, that is a very tricky business. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the best evidence for slowing the clinical worsening, though, has come from medications and probably uh, exercise program. We think exercise slows disability. It keeps people's joints and muscles active better, helps their balance and so forth. Does it really slow the disease itself? We don't know. Uh, but if it makes you better, you should do it. So that's, that's a key element. As far as medications, particularly when the symptoms are still mild, when the disease is first diagnosed. For me, I was diagnosed two and a half years ago. In other words, you don't really need symptomatic therapy. What you really need is doing your best to slow the clinical worsening. Hopefully, it's also slowing the disease, but we don't know that. And that, right now, the only class of drugs that have been looked at thoroughly enough to, to show consistently from one study after another study are, as a class of drugs known as the MEOB inhibitors. The, these two drugs on the market, selegiline and risagiline, show that they can reduce the clinical severity uh, over time and that people compared to placebo, that is the people on the active drug compared to placebo treatment, uh, those on the active drug have done much better consistently in every study. Now is this improvement because there's a mild symptomatic benefit or is the improvement because uh, there's some really a disease modification? Uh, that is hard to prove. We don't know all the causes of Parkinson's. Uh, well, but I'm looking for ways to deal with it now. And, uh, of course. I'm a naive, uh, well, maybe. you're not the only one. Everybody who has got Parkinson's is looking for something now. But that's why you have to support research. We have more today than we had 10 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, but we're not there yet. Uh, 100 years from now, hopefully we're there, right? 50 years from maybe we're hopefully there. 20 years, we don't know when we're gonna be there. But the, the advances we're seeing, and if you went to the sessions this morning, how the alpha-synuclein rogue molecule can spread and cause worsening of the disease. And if we have a way to stop the spread, that would be fantastic. It may not cure Parkinson per se, but if it slows it down or stops progression, that would be wonderful. So, and the sooner you catch it, maybe you can stop it completely. Even in an early stage before you need any medicines, other than stopping the spread of alpha synuclein. So I think there's a lot to be hopeful for. And believe me, Anybody who can discover that will not only probably get a Nobel Prize, but drug companies will make a lot of money, obviously. They're all looking for stopping the spread. Uh, that's big money out there. I'm eating blueberries. Uh, you know, everybody who has Parkinson's will be taking that around the world. I mean, you know there's big money to be made that way. So there's big incentive. Money talks. And uh, drug companies want to go for it. So we know there's people working on it. So that's what's good about it. The more information discovered by basic scientists will give the clues of the, the laboratory people who, who develop drugs to come up with the drug to fight it. So you have to look at it that way.